Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from the Loopy Lamb and the loopylamb.com and thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. It is week 11 of the 2023 Amigurumi Advent Calendar Crochet Along and today we're going to be making these really cute little Amigurumi doll jackets. This is made for my Advent Adam and Advent Addy dolls and you can see that it is loose enough to fit over some of the clothes that Advent Adam is wearing. So if it's put on the naked doll it will be a little large seeming but that's because it needs to fit over Advent Adam's other clothes. This is an easy crochet project and it's easy to customize and you can find the written version of this pattern available for free over on my blog theloopylamb.com. I've also shared some tips for how to customize this piece so you can make it as special as the little one that you plan to give it to you. So before we jump into crocheting our little doll coats, let's cover the materials that you're going to need in order to follow along with today's tutorial. To follow along with today's tutorial, you're going to need the following materials. You're going to need a worsted weight yarn in your color of preference. I'm using this Wee Crochet Brava worsted weight line yarn in the color denim today. You're going to need a tapestry or yarn needle, a stitch marker, a three and a half millimeter or E crochet hook. If you've been using a different hook size to match the gauge in all of the patterns in the crochet along to date, use the, the same crochet hook that you've been using for all the other projects that you've done thus far. You're also going to need four nine millimeter buttons, some scissors, and a sewing needle and sewing thread in the color that matches your yarn. So let's clear my space here and we'll get ready to jump in and start crocheting our Amigurumi doll coat. To start our uh, Amigurumi doll jacket, we're going to need to create a slip knot. So we're going to hold our yarn tail across our hands like this, and then we're going to pin it in place with our thumb and wrap it around our fingers from back uh, front to back and then back to front. And then we're gonna cross it over itself like this to create an X, flip our hand over, and then we're gonna use our ring finger to pin that yarn in place. So we can grab our crochet hook. And we're going to insert our crochet hook under the first strand, over the second, and then pull it out under the first strand. And then we're gonna gently and carefully transfer all of the yarn off of our fingers and onto the hook. Pull on your yarn tail to tighten the slip knot to your hook, and you're ready to begin crocheting. So our uh, doll's jacket is worked from the bottom up. So we're going to be creating a longer chain than we have in other of uh, projects for our doll that go on the upper torso because we're starting from the bottom of the doll or the bottom of the doll's torso which is the widest part. So we're going to begin by creating a chain of 54. So we're going to yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook to create one chain. We're going to yarn over and pull through again and that's two. We're going to continue this yarning over and pulling through the loop on our hook until we have 54 chains. So if you'd like to pause your video and continue to do this yarning over and pulling through the loop to chain until you have 54 chains, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're going to start with row one. So I'm back and I have my chain of 54 and I'm ready to start with row one. To start our row one, we're going to skip six chains. So when we're counting our chains and where to insert our hook for after we've just created our chain, we're never going to count the loop on our hook as a chain. We just never count that. And we're going to count the Vs moving from right to left. Now, if you're left-handed, you're counting from left to right, but I'm right-handed, so we're counting from right to left. So I've got one V here and we're gonna count over six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we, I'm going to put my finger there and sh just tell you, we're going to start working in the seventh chain. So we're gonna skip six chains and we're going to insert our hook into that seventh chain here. Now inserting our hook into that chain, we're going to yarn over our hook and pull up a loop. Now I'm just gonna turn this so you can see it a little easier. At this point, you should have two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops to create our first single crochet stitch. Now you'll see that what we've done by skipping those chains is create a little loop here. And now this will later become a buttonhole on our jacket and we will not ever be working into that chain space. So we should always be stopping at the last stitch before the chain space in subsequent rows. 
So now we're ready to move on with our row one. We've got our first single crochet, and now we're going to work one single crochet into each remaining chain across. So inserting our hook into the next chain, yarning over and pulling up a loop. There should be two loops on your hook there. We're gonna yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your second single crochet. And I'll show you this one more time, inserting our hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. There's two loops on your hook here. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through both loops to complete our single crochet. So now we're going to work one single crochet into each remaining chain across. At the end of this row, you should have 48 stitches across plus our little chain six space here. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of the row to show you how we're moving on to row two. So I just finished my last stitch of row one and your piece should look like this. If your piece is curling around, that's totally normal. That's just going to happen the first row. And as we continue to work subsequent rows, it will flatten out. So for rows two through six, they're all worked in the exact same way. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So we're going to yarn over and chain up one. Okay, then we're going to turn our work. We're working from right to left if we're right-handed and left to right if we are left-handed. So now we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. So when we're working our first stitch, we're identifying those two loops at the top and we're inserting our hook and picking up both loops or under both loops. And then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. We have two loops on our hook at this point, then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And so we're well acquainted now with doing our single crochets. So we're just going to work into each stitch across under both loops, working one single crochet. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds or rows two, three, four, five, and six. So that's rows two through six, doing one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of row six to show you how we're going to move on to row seven. So I'm back and I just finished my last stitch of row six and I'm ready to move on to row seven. To start row seven, we're going to need to create another buttonhole. So we're going to yarn over and chain up six. So pulling through the loop on your hook, there's one yarning over and pulling through, there's two. And we're just gonna to continue to yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook until we have six chains. Now we have our six chains, we're going to turn our work and we're ready to continue on with row seven. We're going to skip these six chains that we created and we're going to place our first single crochet into this last stitch of the previous row here. So now that we've got our single crochet, you can see we have created a second buttonhole here. And if your buttonhole is not on the same side as the first one, then you need to either count your rows and make sure that you've got six or uh, adjust, make some adjustments on your end. So that way you have your buttonholes on the same side. So now we're going to continue on with row seven and we're just going to continue by placing one single crochet into each stitch across. So we should still have 48 stitches at the end of this row, plus our little chain six buttonhole here. So if you'd like to pause your video and finish placing one single crochet into each stitch across for row seven, I'll meet you back here at the end of row seven to show you what we're doing for row eight. So I just finished the last stitch of row seven and I'm ready to move on to row eight. Rows eight through 12 are all done the same way. We're just going to yarn over and chain up one, turn our work, and then we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across. And remember when you get to the end of this first row here, row eight, when you get to that little chain space, we don't work into that chain space. We're just going to stop in the last single crochet of the row. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows eight through 12, working one single crochet into each stitch across. I will finish them up here and I'll meet you back here at the end of row 12 to show you how we're going to move on to row 13. 
All right, so I just finished my last stitch of row 12 and I'm ready to move on to row 13. At the end of, or at the beginning of row 13, we're going to create another buttonhole loop. So if you lost count and you're finding that you're not on the same side as our previous button loops, you need to crochet until you're on the same side of the fabric as your previous button loops. So to start, we're going to do a chain of six to start our button loop. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through the loop. There's one yarn over and pull through, there's two, and we're continuing this until we have six. Now that I have my six chains, I'm going to turn my work. And now skipping these six chains, I'm going to work one single crochet into that first stitch of the row. All right, and now we have our third button loop. Now our, the instructions for the rest of row 13, you'll be very familiar with this, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches of the row. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of row 13 to show you how we're moving on to row 14. So I just finished my last stitch of row 13 and I'm ready to move on to row 14. And row 14, we're just going to yarn over and chain up one, turn our work, and we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch across. And again, when we get to the end here where our chain space is, we're not going to work into that chain space. We're going to stop working in the last single crochet of the round. You should have 48 single crochets at the end of the row. So I'll meet you back here at the end of row 14 because we're gonna start doing some shaping for our jacket in row 15. So if you'd like to pause your video, I'll meet you back here in just a few moments. So we're at the end of row 14 and we're ready to move on to row 15. To start row 15, we're going to yarn over, chain up one and turn our work. And we're going to start row 15 by working one single crochet into each of the first nine stitches. There's one. Five. And here is nine. So now that we have our nine single crochets completed, we're going to create a chain space for our armhole. So we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop and we're going to do this until we have 10 chains. So we've done one already and we're gonna continue until we have 10. And 10. So now that we have 10 chains, we're going to skip eight stitches. So look, looking at your work, you see our last single crochet here. We're going to start counting in the next stitch directly next to the last single crochet. So we're going to count over eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, when we skip eight stitches, that means we're going to work into the ninth stitch. So I'm putting a finger here on the ninth stitch to remind me that that's where I'm going to start working. So starting in that ninth stitch, we're going to place one single crochet. And you can see here that we have closed that chain space here, and now this will become an armhole later. So now we will place one single crochet into each of the next 13 stitches. So that's 13 stitches plus the one we did, we should have 14. So I'm just going to take one moment to quickly count and make sure I didn't lose count there. So perfect, I have 14 single crochets and I'm ready to create my second armhole. And to make sure our armholes are even, we're going to do another chain 10. So we're going to yarn over and pull through the loop on our loop and we're going to continue until we have 10 chains. So now that I have my 10 chains, I'm going to need to skip eight stitches in my piece. So again, starting in the stitch directly next to the stitch we just la we last worked previous to our chains, we're going to count over eight. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And again, when we skip eight chains or eight stitches, we're working into the ninth stitch. So I'm just going to place my finger there on the ninth stitch so I know where I'm working. So then I'm going to work one single crochet into that ninth stitch there. 
So now that I have my first single crochet in that ninth stitch here, I should have eight more single crochets remaining. And so I'm just going to work one single crochet into each of those remaining eight stitches. At the end of this row, you should have 32 stitches and two chain 10 spaces that are going to be our armholes for our jacket. So now that we are at the end of the row, we're ready to move to row 16. So for row 16, we are going to chain up one and turn our work. So for this piece, we're going, or this row, we're going to start with one single crochet into the first two stitches. So there's our first and our second. Then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. And now I'm gonna tell you in a moment why that, why I'm doing this slightly differently. So there's one, three, and six. So if you're following along with the written pattern, you'll see that it says single crochet two, and then in brackets, single crochet six and single crochet decrease close and then the bracket is closed and it says time six because we're going to do a pattern repeat across this row. So the first, this beginning of the repeat is six single crochets and then we're going to do a decrease. And so this decrease starts in our chain space here or starts in the last stitch and then ends in our chain space. So we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. We're going to insert our hook into the first chain yarn over and pull up a loop. We should have three loops on our hook and we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now what this decrease does is it turns two stitches into one, decreasing the stitch count in our row. And so because we have this repeat of six single crochets followed by a decrease, and it says in the pattern, we're going to do this pattern six times. That means we're eliminating six stitches from our row count. So we're going to do that repeat again. Right, so we're going to crochet once into each of the next six chains. So there's one, there's four, and six. So now that we have our six single crochets done, we have to do a nether decrease. So we're going to insert our hook into the first chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert into the next chain, yarn over and one sec, snug, snag there on the yarn, but we pulled up a loop. And now we have three loops on our hook. So we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops to do our next decrease. So now we've done that repeat twice we're going to do this four more times. So single crochet into the last chain there and into the next five stitches. So there's my last single crochet and now I'm going to do another single crochet decrease. So again, insert into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over one last time and pull that through all three loops on your hook, completing your decrease. So we're going to do our repeat again, six single crochets followed by a decrease. So there's one, three, and six. And now we're back to our next chain space and we're ready to do a decrease stitch. So working into that first stitch, we're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop into the first chain there. And that can be a little tiny to and difficult to see um, if you were um, chaining tightly. So just make sure that you're getting that first chain, yarning over and pulling up a loop. So we've got those three loops on our hook and we're yarning over and pulling through all three. So this, we're doing another um, one of our pattern repeats again of six single crochets followed by a decrease. So here's two.
And there's four, five, and six. So now we've got our six single crochets. We are ready to do our next decrease. So inserting into the first and inserting into the second chain, yarning over and pulling through all three loops. So now that we've done our decrease, we have one more repeat to do of those six single crochets followed by a decrease. So we're going to work one single crochet into that last chain there. There's one, two, and six. So there's our six single crochets, and now we have one last decrease to do. So inserting into the first, yarn over and pull up a loop, into the second, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then we have two stitches remaining in the row, and we're going to work one single crochet into each of those stitches. At the end of row 16 here, you should have 46 stitches. So for row 17, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. To start row 17, we're going to start with a single crochet decrease. So inserting into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Then we're going to do another pattern repeat. This repeat, instead of six single crochets followed by a decrease, we're going to do five single crochets followed by a decrease, and we're going to do this six times. So let's start our first repeat. One single crochet into the first five stitches. So there's our fifth single crochet, and we're going to do our decrease. So we're going to insert into the first and the second, and then yarn over and pull through all your loops on your hook. So that's our first full repeat done, and now we have to do this five more times. So one single crochet into each of the first five stitches. Right, there's five, doing a single crochet decrease next. There we go. So that's our second repeat. So we're going to do this four more times. So we're going to single crochet into the first five stitches. There's five, followed by our decrease. So we're just going to repeat this pattern of five single crochets followed by a decrease across our piece until there are two stitches left to be worked. So if you'd like to pause your video and meet me back here when you're at that point and you have two stitches left to be worked, I'll meet you back here and show you how we're going to do or what we're going to do in those last two stitches in just a moment. So we're at the end of row 17 and we have these last two stitches that need to be worked. And we're going to work a single crochet decrease into that those last two stitches. So into the first stitch, pull up a loop, into the second, pull up a loop, and then pull through all the loops on your hook. And that's your last stitch of this row. At the end of row uh, 17, you should have 38 stitches. So we're moving on to row 18, and we're going to do that by yarning over, chaining up one, and turning our work. For row 18, we're going to start by placing one single crochet into each of the first five stitches. So now that we have our five single crochets, we're going to do a single crochet decrease. And now we have a pattern repeat for this row. We're going to do four single crochets followed by a decrease five times. So working one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. Five 
followed by a decrease. And that is our first repeat. We're going to do that again. One single crochet into each of the first four stitches. Followed by a decrease into the next. And one more time I'll show you. One single crochet into each of the first four stitches. Followed by a single crochet decrease. So if you'd like to pause your video and continue these repeats of four single crochets followed by a decrease until you have one stitch left in the row, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're going to finish off that last stitch. So we're here at the end of row 18 and we have this one stitch that needs to be worked and we're going to just work one single crochet into that last stitch. Now we're ready to move on to row 19, which is our last row of the body of our jacket. To start row 19, we're going to chain six because we're going to be creating our last buttonhole for a jacket. So we're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop and we're doing this until we have created six chains. Now that we have our six chains, we're going to turn our piece And then we're going to skip those six chains and we're going to work one single crochet into that first stitch, creating our buttonhole. Now we have a repeat that we're going to need to do four times. And that repeat starts with a single crochet decrease. So again, inserting into those first and second stitches, pulling up loops and then pulling them through all three loops on your hook. Now we're going to put one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So that's the end of our first repeat. We need to do this a total of four times. So we need to do this three more times. So we're going to do a decrease, that single crochet decrease again. And then we're going to do one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And again, we're going to do another single crochet decrease, followed by one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. And one more time, we're going to do that decrease, followed by one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So now that we're done our repeats, we're going to move on with the remaining instructions, and we're going to work a single crochet decrease. Now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And then we're going to do a single crochet decrease over these last two stitches that are remaining in our row. So at the end of this row, you should have 26 stitches and your one chain six space here for your button. So we're going to finish off and let me grab my scissors here. We're going to cut our yarn, leaving at least four to six inches of a tail to weave in your ends. So now that I've cut my yarn, I'm going to grab my hook and I'm going to yarn over with that yarn tail and pull that yarn tail through the loop on my hook and all the way through to secure it and you're all set there, and you can weave your ends in. Now, I want to talk about the right side versus the wrong side for a moment. Now, single crochet is generally mostly, for most people, it's reversible. It does, to me, at least have a better looking side, and the better looking side is generally determined by where the location of your yarn tail is. So, 
I'm right-handed, so my yarn tail is on my left-handed side, and that means that the when the yarn tail's on my left-handed side, that the side of the fabric that's looking at me is the right side. If you are left-handed, then the yarn tail will be located on the right side of your fabric. So the you're going to need to be able to determine right side versus wrong side in the next steps of our pattern. So if you weave in your yarn ends, don't, de don't despair because there's another trick for determining right side versus wrong side. And that is the location of our buttons. For right-handed crocheters, the buttons will be, when the laid, laid flat, the coat should have the buttons on the right-hand side, All right? If you're left-handed, then the buttons will be on the left-hand side, okay? So we're going to uh, weave in my ends here quickly, and then I'll be back to show you how we're going to start working the sleeves of our jacket. All right, so we are ready to move on with adding the sleeves to our jacket. And as we've already discussed, we talked about the right side versus the wrong side. So with the right side facing you and using the tips we already discussed, we want to have the right side of the fabric facing you. It doesn't matter which armhole you're going to do first because the instructions will be the same for both armholes. So I'm just going to start on this one here that's closest to my right hand going to move that out of the way and because we're going to start our sleeve with what's called a single crochet join or you might have also heard it called a standing single crochet and it really helps to create a cleaner quicker yarn join and I'm going to show you how to do that if you want to see this done and see the different and hear about the different uses of this technique you can check out my youtube tutorial here on the channel called the single crochet join or again standing single crochet so we're taking the yarn, ta yarn tail of our working yarn and we're going to create a slip knot. So we already covered this, so I'll do this relatively quickly. We're just going to wrap it around our fingers, cross it over, lock it in place. Then we're going to insert our hook under the first strand over the second. And then we're pulling that under the first and transferring all the yarn off our fingers and onto the hook. Then we're going to grab our yarn tail and tighten that up to our hook. We're ready to get going. So we're bringing back our jacket here and we're looking closely at our armhole. So we're going to attach our single crochet join in the center point of the bottom of the armhole. Now we skipped eight stitches so we're just going to do our best guesstimate to pick the center point of the bottom of our armhole. It's not an exact science obviously if it was we'd have an odd number of stitches. It's not a huge deal if you're off to one side, but just do your best and pick what you what looks like the center stitch to you. So I'm gonna pick this stitch here because that looks good. And with the slip knot already on my hook, I'm gonna insert my hook into that stitch. Okay, then we're going to pick up our yarn and I'm gonna take my finger and I'm going to hold that slip knot in place for the next step here because it's a little easier to hold it in place than having it slide around on you. So now that I'm inserted into the hook, I'm going to yarn over and pull up the loop. Okay, so now I have two loops on my hook. Look familiar yet? Kind of like a single crochet, right? So we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook. And let me just stop for a second so we can just appreciate that we just did a single crochet without a chain one or a turn, or even attaching with a slip knot. It's one of my favorite techniques. So now that we've done that, we're going to continue to place our single crochets around the outside of the armhole, which will act as the base of our sleeve. So we've already got one single crochet, so we're going to work 18 more single crochets around the armhole. So working here into these stitches, we can see that we can do four more here. So now I've done the four and I'm going to turn my work because I'm going to work along the top of the armhole. Now, when we did our chains, you should still have little loops at the bottom of this chains from when we put our stitches in there. You should, let me just see if I can loosen one up there so it's a little easier to see. We should have some loops remaining. So those are the loops that we're going to work into when we're working across this part of the piece. So we're just going to single crochet across. 
into all of those stitches. Again, we have at the end, we want to have 19 stitches. And if you need to put some into the side here, again, it's not a super exact science. You're just wanting to work 19 single crochets around your armhole. Now, remember that we did that single crochet join at the beginning, that counts as a stitch. So we're only working those 18 extra single crochets to get a total of 19, right? So I don't wanna confuse it by saying we, we're doing 19. You're doing 18 stitches plus your single crochet join. So I've got all my 19 stitches. I'm back at the beginning and I'm going to join my last stitch to my first stitch to close my sleeve right now. So I'm gonna work into that first stitch here. I'm gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook. And I'm gonna pull that loop all the way through the loop that's already on my hook. And now my two sides are joined together. And I'm ready to move on to create the rest of my sleeve. So I personally like to bring in a stitch marker at this point and mark the first stitch of the row because when we start using these slip stitch joints, it's super easy to either pick up extra stitches or loose stitches. So if I put a stitch marker in that first stitch, which in the next row will be my last stitch of the row, then I know where I need to stop and it's gonna help me uh, prevent those picking up and losing of stitches, all right? So moving into round two, we're going to yarn over and chain up one and turn our work. Let me try to get this yarn tail out of the way here for us, folks. There we go. And so we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So we're not doing any sort of shaping. They're just straight sleeves. And we're, again, we're just working one single crochet into each stitch around. So that means if we had 19 stitches in the previous round, we'll have 19 stitches in this round. All right, so you can see I'm back to that stitch marker. So I know that's my last stitch to work and I'm gonna pop that out. And then I'm going to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch again. So again, inserting into that la first stitch of the round, yarning over and pulling up a loop, two loops on our hook. And then we're gonna pull that loop we just pulled up through the loop that was already on our hook to join our two sides together. And again, I'm bringing in that stitch marker and popping it into the first stitch of the round. So for rounds three through nine, they're all done the same way. We're going to chain up one, work one single crochet into each stitch around, and then we're going to join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows three through nine, working one single crochet into each stitch around and joining your last stitch to your first stitch. I'll meet you back here at the end of row nine to show you how we're gonna finish off our sleeve. So I'm back and I just finished my last stitch of row nine. I've done my slip stitch join and I'm ready to finish off my sleeve. So I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut a yarn tail of about four to six inches here, always making sure we have enough to even our ends. And then I'm just going to pull that yarn tail all the way through my slip stitch here. And then I'm going to pull that to tighten. All right, so this is where our sleeve should be at this point. You could make it longer or shorter depending on your preferences. But that is my, this is, that was a good like sleeve length because I want to have the hands peeking out a little bit out of the sleeve. Now, once you've done your first sleeve, you're going to need to rewind the video and watch the instructions for the sleeve to repeat it on the second armhole. When you've done your second sleeve, you will need to have your four buttons and you can just take your jacket and meet the two front sides together. I personally like to put this on the doll and I'll show you how, what I do. Now the jacket is meant to be large, okay? So it's, it's going to be large on the doll without clothes on because it's meant to fit over the clothes because um, most children were, are going to put a coat on over the clothes. Now we're going to take our jacket and meet the two sides together 
and then figure out where you're going to put your where the buttonholes meet where the button should be and then you're just going to sew your buttons on the jacket where the buttonholes line up with the other side of the fabric. And that's it. That's how you make your doll jacket. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. If you enjoy free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylamb.com. Thanks so much for watching friends. Happy hooking and I'll see you next time.